Hi, my name is Brian Gracely, and in this series of videos, we're going to talk about cloud computing from a bunch of different angles. Uh, we're going to talk about sort of cloud 101, some history, uh, the basics of cloud computing, how we got to where we are in the industry, and how the industry is evolving. We're going to talk about basic cloud technologies, so the infrastructure, software, management and operations, um, all the basics that go into, into cloud computing. We're going to talk about cloud economics, so um, what's changing with cloud computing? How is it changing not only the technology, but how is it changing the economics of how businesses are using technology to either uh, deliver services for their business or deliver services as part of what they do uh, in the business world? So we'll talk about economics. We're going to talk about infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service, so IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS. We're going to talk about the changing skills and, and organizational structure that's really needed in order to build, operate, and leverage cloud computing. Uh, we're going to talk about cloud management and, and operations, the operational models needed to be successful with cloud computing. We're going to talk about cloud infrastructure, so what are the building blocks that are going to allow people to uh, build and deploy cloud applications, uh, migrate, in some cases, legacy applications into a more dynamic infrastructure or at least a more automated, virtualized infrastructure. We'll talk about cloud security and how people can begin to audit their uh, applications and their environment as they move to more cloud computing-like or uh, purely cloud computing models. Uh, we're going to look at some of the laws and rules and regulations that people need to be aware of when dealing with cloud computing. And finally, we'll look at cloud from a multi-tenancy perspective and what that means as people start to share resources for delivering IT services, providing IT services, and what that means from a security and auditing perspective, what it means from an infrastructure perspective, what it can mean from an application perspective. Now, these videos are being put together such that you can watch any of them uh, in any order. Uh, they're going to be done independently and we're going to do them in a way that they will build on top of each other but again you can look at them independently and each one of these videos will be done separately. So uh, with that in mind let's go ahead and get started with Cloud 101. How do we get to where we are today? So for many many people when you talk about cloud computing the initial thing that comes to mind is well isn't cloud computing sort of like the internet? People have been using applications on the internet uh, for a long time. And for many people, they're very, very used to doing this since just after the, the, turn, of the uh, turn of the century. So just after 2000, 2001, when a number of applications started popping up on the internet, the people were able to use using just a web browser. And the web browser experience moved from uh, static web pages and static links to a web browser experience that felt and looked just like applications that ran on your desktop. So things that a lot of people are very familiar with in the communication space, Skype or WebEx, um, really simple application that people use every single day is Search, whether it was Yahoo Search or Google Search or Microsoft Search, um, you know, an application used as a service. And so most things that people equate to cloud computing, or at least did for a long time, was what was often called software as a service. So the ability to leverage an application across the internet, uh, across the public internet in most cases, be able to get to it via just a web browser, and be able to just use the application on demand. And some of the applications were free, some of the applications were free and they were supported by ads. Some of them were on a pay per use model. Some of them were on a pay per year model. Uh, but that's what that's kind of the origin of cloud computing and where people were thinking about cloud computing. If you were to take this back a little bit further, really what you're doing, doing is you're extending the models that people have used for decades in terms of computing. So what you had was uh, individual end users with devices. So in this case, laptops or workstations or mobile phones that were able to access computing resources somewhere over the internet and that model has really evolved. It's evolved from mainframe applications and mainframes where you had sort of dumb endpoints of everything centralized to uh, minis and client server where you had a little more intelligence in an endpoint, um, more distributed computing in terms of where the applications reside and again all this access across the network whether that's localized storage, centralized storage, centralized applications, uh, uh, localized applications. And so again, what we've been seeing is this natural evolution of uh, applications getting distributed across the network, the data residing in multiple locations, could be local, could be distributed, 
And over time, the technologies to access this have evolved. They've evolved from green screen terminals to the beginning you know, of PCs to devices that were used in browsers to mobile devices and tablets, where we are today. Now, what's happened and, and why cloud computing has become a much larger sort of buzz in our industry is really people look at it as the next evolution of computing is they begin to say, well, let's really break down what cloud computing does for an IT organization or for a technology company looking to uh, be in business and try and provide services. So it does a couple of things. The first thing it does is it says, well, uh, I've got applications, and these applications could be uh, older applications or they could be rewritten applications. So I've got applications. I've got infrastructure underneath that that supports these. And this infrastructure is going to be storage, it's going to be servers, it's going to be the network, okay? So I've got infrastructure to support my applications. And if we start to look at how cloud computing, the, the people, the companies that have been doing this in the public domain for a long time, what they've been doing is they've been able to deliver uh, rapid applications, They've been able to do it on a dynamic basis, so they don't necessarily know how many users they're going to have at any given point in time. So they're able to take the resources that they have and grow them pretty easily, shrink them pretty easily, depending on peak uh, and, and capacity needs for their application or for the business. Um, to some extent, you're able to, as an end user or as a business, consume these on a self-service basis. You don't have to go and, and, and go through IT procurement. You don't have to go through business justification. You simply, use, you simply went to a website, signed up for the application, and began to use the application. So there was a level of what we call self-service that was built into these applications. This was a dynamic resource, right? We talked about it could expand when capacity needs were growing or demand was high. It could contract itself when demand was lower. And so what happened was, and, and in order to be able to do this, we had great levels of automation that were built into the application, into the infrastructure, and into the overall nature of these businesses that were delivering software as a service, which was really sort of the first incarnation of what people thought of for cloud computing. Now, in most cases, these were thought to be public cloud. And by public cloud, that means that the resources were available to the public. They resided out on the internet, in the public domain, they weren't behind corporate firewalls, they weren't sort of hidden from uh, competitive companies, they were available to the public. And what happened was, many uh, companies, enterprise companies, government organizations, mid-sized companies, began to ask themselves, okay, a lot of these services that I may be able to use as a public cloud, or in some cases, software as a service, SaaS, how do they begin to ask themselves, how are, how are those companies doing that? And since those public cloud resources and those software as a service resources didn't make up everything that they needed to do for their business, or at least at the time, they began to ask themselves, how do I go about leveraging what these companies do, what are their best practices, and are there ways in which I can take advantage of those best practices, leverage those technologies, and either use them on a different level internally for their own business in many cases. I want to run it privately. And so this is where you hear a term like private cloud come up. It was in essence businesses asking, can I begin to run some of my applications, some of my IT services in a uh, controlled manner in their uh, in their data centers within their resources, um, but it also sort of spawned this this idea that maybe service providers should get into the business of being able to have infrastructure resources, application resources available um, as sort of the next generation of outsourcing, if you will, right? More dynamic resources, more self-service resources, more dynamic infrastructure, the ability to host multiple types of applications, multiple type of application development environment, and so. What we've ultimately evolved to from a cloud computing perspective was the original, everything was public, everything was mostly software as a service, to an environment where enterprises and governments and commercial customers are asking, how do I take all of these things and potentially deliver them you know, within their private environments, within their own data centers, 
So that's one new concept that's, that's beginning to evolve. We're seeing more and more companies who are saying, you know, what can I leverage in the public cloud? What type of core versus context things for my business should I own? Should I look at managing from, a, from an operational perspective versus a capital expenditure uh, perspective? What new applications can I potentially get faster in the public cloud, right? So with the advent of mobile devices, tablet devices, smartphones, um, applications that are maybe more efficient through touch, maybe I want to leverage things in a public cloud, or I want to leverage development environments that are more rapidly uh, evolving, that are more geared towards those environments. And so all these questions are starting to come up, but what we're seeing is, the best practices for how to, how to build a cloud environment, a dynamic, highly automated, self-service aware, supporting multiple applications environment is becoming more well known and whether it's used for private resources, public resources, or we're beginning to see more and more companies that are saying, you know, with all this evolution going on, these technology evolutions that are going on, this opens up a huge number of opportunities for me. Not only can I potentially run my application, my legacy applications or my existing applications more efficiently, um, I may be able to start looking at some new development environments to be able to build new applications. So things that I want to build for my business where I believe I have a competitive advantage, uh, I have certain unique knowledge, certain ways to access data, and I want to begin to look at new ways of um, writing those applications, so new development environments, and that's called Platform as a Service, P-A-A-S, PaaS, Platform as a Service. Um, and, and then we're also seeing more and more companies that are saying, hey, you know, how can I leverage these software as a service environments? And so what we're seeing is the evolution again of from mainframe to more distributed applications to more distributed devices to now an environment where we look at how do we run the infrastructure extremely efficiently and dynamically? How do we give potentially more control to developers, more control, more opportunities to developers, more opportunities for our end users to consume IT resources as they need to, whether those come from internally within an IT organization or externally. We have opportunities for the business users, for the business finance groups, to look at how do I want to uh, finance my IT expenditures? Do I want to continue to buy equipment you know, where I do things within a private environment? Or do I want to look to more of a on-demand, uh, operational expenditure-driven model for more prob public uh, types of environments? And so really, cloud computing becomes this evolution that's allowing end users, developers, and, and the business drivers to have more flexibility, to have more options. We're seeing that the best practices from uh, the public environments that were done at very, very large scale, sometimes were for consumer environments, but may now evolve for uh, enterprise and business environments. Those are becoming more well known, and businesses have the opportunity to use them uh, internally or externally. And we're seeing more and more opportunities to leverage the newer technologies that are driving business, whether they're mobile, whether they're dynamic environments, whether they're the ability to start to consume more and more data uh, and make uh, better business decisions, better ways to interact with our customers, better ways to build products. All of these things are the driving forces behind cloud computing. And we're going to talk about all of the details and all the underlying pieces of this uh, in subsequent videos. So what I ask that people take away from this initial video is that cloud computing is an evolution of the technology paradigms that have happened over the last 20, 30, 40 years. It is opening up opportunities for end users to be more self-sufficient, to leverage the devices they want to leverage and the types of applications that they may be more familiar with and they're more used to. It allows developers of applications, developers whether they're delivering their services uh, as a service or they're de developing them for a business, we're giving them more flexibility in how they can consume resources and the types of development environments they can use. We're giving the business more flexibility in terms of them saying, I have a business problem, how do I align technology to that, and can I align it in ways where sometimes we want to make a long-term investment in the technology, other times we're looking for ways to experiment, try out new business models, and in some cases I want a more short-term way of, of leveraging technology, something that's more aligned with risk and reward in the business. And ultimately, all of these options are now becoming available as both a private set of resources for a business, 
a public set of resources for a business, an interconnection between those public resources and those private resources. Tons and tons of flexibility. So that's the core of what cloud computing delivers. And we'll talk about what are the underlying infrastructures in terms of technology, in terms of economics, in terms of the people skills that are needed to make this new paradigm in computing and in technology successful for your business and successful for how you deliver services uh, to help grow your customer base, grow your business, make people happier, and use uh, the types of technologies and devices they want to be uh, need to be pr um, productive and successful in the world. Thank you. Appreciate you watching this video.